So I thought it would be fun to create a bridge that is local to us. This is the Bevel Jarrow Bridge, which is, it goes over 59 and allows bikers and walkers to access the Spring Creek Trail, which is a really nice area locally. Googling it, it's a pretty old bridge, so it's actually a historic site. And um, it was built in 1931. The closest I could find to dimensions on this, and if, if you scroll in on this, you can't really, it's pretty fuzzy. So, but it does give that there's two 200 Parker through truss spans. So if you look at it, there's quite a long distance here without a span and then one, two, and then another long distance. So I'm gonna kind of ignore this overall length and just focus on one of these truss areas. And what I will use is just a snip of the picture and I'm gonna take ratios so if this is 200, halfway through is 100, and it makes sense that that would be 25, 50, 75, 100 then. And I'm gonna map this out in Excel before bringing it into Inventor. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and use the snipping tool, copy and paste that image into Excel, fill in some coordinates, for these coordinates, I'm going to go ahead and define the coordinate system so that that zero, zero point is a lower left-hand side of the bridge. And the line tool in Excel, you can actually get the length of these lines. So I'll go ahead and draw over the image, look under formatting to get the length of these lines and then use that for a scaling factor. So half of this span would be 100, and that gives me the ratio. Then I can use the, the length of these lines to kind of estimate the height. And um, these are, it's a fuzzy image, so you can't really get an exact even line length. So I'm just getting order of magnitude here and rounding up. So we'll use 25, 30, 40. And I'll go ahead and put each of those X positions in twice, one for where the road surface is and one up to the height of the truss at that point. So we're just going back and forth between zero and the height of the truss, just to give us a basic framework of, of where we want to get those points into Inventor. Now Inventor uses inches, not feet, so quick conversion there, control C, control Alt B to get just the values into an Excel file that we can use at Inventor. So I'm over in Inventor now using the English inch template. So that's what we have our dimensions in there is an inch. Starting up a two dimensional sketch and we're gonna go ahead and pull just those points in that we figured out. And this will give us something to snap to as we're creating our bridge. So zooming out, there's our points. The first thing I'm gonna to use to connect these is a construction line. And then I will use the offset command to turn those single lines into something that I can extrude. So, Walking around just the edge of this, you might have to zoom in to really make sure that you're, um, <clears throat> you're snapping to the right points here. So make sure that you are getting this outside points. And this will be much easier than trying to define dimensions. This gives us a real good framework to start moving from. I'm skipping points if they're just straight across from one another. And I'll walk around the edge, offset the edge, and then I'll start walking around those interior features. Speeding this up a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and offset all of these lines by a foot. 
And I'm doing this first all in construction lines, and I will later go around and turn what I need to extrude into solid lines. Have that picture of the bridge up in front of you, maybe even print a copy off so you can remember the pattern that the truss structure makes. And a final step for all of this is going to be making sure that each of those loops is closed and really zoom in on each of those intersections. Make sure you're grabbing the point that you think you were grabbing. You might have to delete some of those hidden lines at the very end, the construction lines, so they don't get in the way of closing loops. And this one, I'm only doing half of the bridge because I can use the mirror command. So use symmetry to your advantage and only make whatever section of it is repeating. Okay, so closing up each of those individual loops every now and then stop sketching, save it. You can also kind of walk around those areas to see what's going to extrude before the final mirror command. Rather than making two sides to this bridge, I'm going to see if I can extrude the entire thing and be very careful how you're selecting this. If you have everything clipped correctly, it should be able to grab that entire truss structure without missing any of it. And I'm going to go ahead and extrude this 25 feet or 300 inches, and then I'll carve out the center of this. So that'll get me both sides of the bridge in just one extrude. So I'll go ahead and say OK. And this is starting to be a pretty complex shape, so make sure to hit that Save button fairly regularly. Okay, zooming in, I'm going to go ahead and do this next sketch on the road surface itself, which means I'm going to need to view and say slice graphics. And that will allow me to see through the roof so that I can just kind of see that, that 2D road surface. I will go ahead and draw a rectangle on this that I will then offset. And again, I'm starting off with my construction line selected so that I can then decide what to extrude. And really what I want to do is just bring these two sides in. And I'll go ahead and keep everything with that, that 12 inches or just one foot. So I'll say offset 12 inches and offset 12 inches. I can turn these construction lines into solid lines by clicking on them and then clicking on the construction and closing off the end for this. Again, making sure that this is going to be a solid line now. And then I'll just pull this up rather than a solid. I'll show you how to pull this up as a, um, as a whole and just carve out anything we don't need up here. OK, finish. And we'll see if we have a solid surface in here. And we do. So I'm going to go ahead and overshoot this so it comes all the way to the top. And for my behavior, you can either extrude as a solid or you can actually cut into the material itself. So I'm going to make sure it's going the right direction and then I'm using this cut tool instead of a solid. And there we go. We have the, the main outline. Now this bridge also had some truss structures along the top. So I'll go ahead and fill those in next. So I'll go ahead and start sketching on the roof of this to make that final piece of the truss structure. Any surface you click on, you can sketch on. 
And again, going back and forth between using construction lines, solid lines, trimming things out, closing loops. I'm pushing these into the bridge itself. That will let all the corners um, line up well at the very end without any gaps. You have to make sure when you do push them into the structure that you're pushing them in this time as a solid, not as a carving it out. And again, I only have to do half of this because at the very end, I'm going to go ahead and use the mirror command. You can mirror three-dimensional extrusions just like you can mirror two-dimensional drawings. Going ahead and adding some supports on here using parametric constraints and mirror commands. And I'm making this just like it is over there, so estimating it. One more thing, I'm going to go ahead and add some ends on this that I'm going to use to constrain it when we go over for the finite element analysis. So once we have this bridge where we want it, we can come to Environments, Stress Analysis, Create Study, and we're going to go ahead and choose Static Analysis. OK. We'll need to assign a material to our bridge. This should bring up a whole material library. have to wait for it a little bit. Click on Materials. This is one of the things I'd like you to explore. So we can make this out of concrete, out of aluminum. There are some different types of iron, cast iron, ductile gray, I'm going to go ahead with some standard metal iron. So this little arrow will add the material up here. And I'll right click on this and say Assign to Selection. And you can see the color of my bridge has changed because it has a material assigned to it. So I'll go ahead and say OK. Next, I'm going to define what is attached. So I'll go ahead and let's assume that this bridge is sunk down into the bedrock. So I'm going to make these feet here have some nice stable fixed constraints. And I'm also going to let the end of my bridge be connected kind of to the rest of the um, the rest of the bridge. The next thing we need to add is some kind of an applied force. Now it's already holding up its own weight, but I'm going to add a pressure along the whole road surface here of maybe. I'm going to be very conservative, one pound per square inch. And we'll see how it goes. OK, next up, creating a mesh. Make sure that each of the thin members are being detected and have a mesh being added to it. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit Simulate and Run. Wait for it. And this will show us all of the stress, the force per area, and strain change in length per area. And we can see there's quite a lot of bending and stretching. You can animate this to really watch how this is stretching out. You can see the compression along the very top of this stress structure is actually holding up quite a lot. You can also come in here and use a probe that's right under the animate button. And we can look for especially these red spots to see where our, our max and min strains are. 
It looks like this is pretty symmetrical, but we want to see where this is going to break. And if you can grab a few screenshots showing the first attempt of your bridge design and what those max stresses are, then redesign it and show the new stresses under the same loading condition. On the left-hand side, you'll see the different results. So if you have a cube of material, there's actually stress and strain in the X, the Y, and the Z direction. Von Mises is kind of an average between these, but you can see where the maximum stresses are happening, where your safety factors are a problem. So you can walk through each of these reports to see where it's deforming. And once you grab a couple of these screenshots, so again, just use your snipping tool and grab one of these screenshots that, that shows what that load is redesign it and see if you can get rid of those problem areas in your structure. And it would be really neat if like this you did an actual bridge. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and finish the stress analysis. And instead of a stress analysis, this time I'm going to do a modal analysis. So create study, modal analysis, and Eight frequencies is fine. There's actually a multiple number of vibrational frequencies that it likes to it likes to vibrate with. So some similar things. It still has its material assigned from last time. Let's make sure that it has the correct boundary constraints, that it's not just floating around in outer space. So we can decide how to really constrain this stuff. Maybe we'll just constrain the feet this time to see what that does. Okay, so we'll say apply. And we'll go ahead and run the simulation again. And this time we're doing the modal analysis instead of the static analysis. So you can see the, the modal IPT up here. And this will take us through all of the frequencies that this bridge would like to vibrate with. This is where it's really fun to watch the animation. So you can see if there's an earthquake that comes through the area, this is one of the ways the bridge would like to move around. So there's the first frequency at 1.35 hertz. Here's the second frequency. So we can again animate this and see which way it's vibrating. And this is another thing to decide how could I redesign this bridge to prevent this kind of motion and look at the where those frequencies are happening at, and you can compare them to the frequency of like what a truck would generate as a truck is driving across this bridge, what the wind would generate, and you want to design it so these natural frequencies are not something that it's going to see on a day-to-day -day basis, where you get something that looks like a Tacoma Narrows Bridge. So some, some interesting ways that this could start vibrating around. Okay, so hopefully that was kind of fun. And this week you can play around with bridges, become really familiar with all of the drawing tools, import Excel points. You can import, use a equation curve perhaps. And if you can actually model a real bridge, that would be that would be a bonus.